This is a relatively short video to clarify an omission I made to my Masonic Templar Myths video of December the 9th. This is specifically relating to the final section regarding the circular and octagonal design of some Templar buildings. Basically, I edited several sections out of my video because I felt I was mocking the original videos too much and also wanted to reduce the running time anyway. But in doing so, I missed out a very important point, so thanks to Legion Dude for raising this point in the comments. As you can see, his comment was, Regarding Templar circular architecture, he says that he thought the general consensus was that it was due to influences of the design of the then current architecture of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, and asks if I've heard any countervailing voices about that. And as you can see in my reply, I, 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 I'm saying, oh indeed, the rotunda of the Holy Sepulchre is the reason to go circular or symmetrical. I now realise I edited that out completely, etc, etc, you know, to cut down time and all that. Moving on. The Holy Sepulchre was destroyed and rebuilt. I am unsure at what stage the pillars became a feature, because the oldest plans do not seem to have any pillars marked in the rotunda. So this inner wall that we can see, is that with pillars at the base of arches, or is it not? You know, I don't really know. But what is certainly true is that the earliest round church in England predates the Templars and was built by Simon de Song Lee upon his immediate return from the First Crusade. And, if, uh, and that church is called the Holy Sepulchre in Northampton. You see, the other thing I should have made clear that I did not, and again I'm sorry about this, the Crusader circular churches were not unique to the Templars. It, w it was a feature specifically of returning crusaders. And yes, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem was indeed the inspiration for that design. Now, going back to the Holy Sepulchre in Northampton, uh, I'll, I'll continue here. It, it has eight pillars, so it's fair to assume the Byzantines added pillars when they rebuilt the Holy Sepulchre and would have been discovered that way by the crusaders before they themselves then went about rebuilding the place in the 12th century. You know, because the Muslims had destroyed their original church and then it was rebuilt by the Byzantines. And then by the time that the Crusaders got there, it was in a state of disrepair again. And was ne and, and, and so they then went about uh, re rebuilding the place. Now precisely what they built extra and what was the original design, is it's very hard to actually say. But I continue here. Incidentally, Temple Church in London only has six pillars in its round nave. They put eight pillars in the chancel, and that fuels a lot of conspiracy theories where people think this proves some sort of pagan or heretical connection. But there's never any actual evidence that can be produced to support the theories. What we do know is that the Pope had no problem granting ex-Templars the right to start new orders or to join existing ones. De Molay himself received absolution. The people at that time did not believe the heresy claims, despite what went down in France. But if we look at the Hospitaller's Crusader Church at Little Maplestead, we see they also used six pillars in the nave. So if six pillars is an indication of Templar heresy, surely that means the Hospitallers were equally guilty of the same heresy. The obvious conclusion would be that such heresy myths are the modern Gnostic revival being anachronistically projected back in time onto the old orders. After all, if using six pillars instead of eight was such heresy, then it would have been listed among the charges against the Templars, which it was not. The best guess we have for the Hospitallers and Templars using six pillars in their nave instead of eight is perhaps to serve as a reminder that they are imperfect, and as such must strive all the harder to maintain their holy vows. Now, I must admit that I haven't been too exhaustive in checking this out. After all, my passions do lie elsewhere. <laughs> but I've not found commentary on the number of pillars used, so in this regard, your guess is as good as mine. If we take a quick look at a couple of the more grandiose designs inspired by the Holy Sepulchre, we can see the mix of circular and octagonal geometries dominating the spaces. Sacred geometry is indeed a thing, and New Age interpretations hold no monopoly on deciphering the building codes. But where does the idea for a circular structure and dome come from? Well, basically, it's a copy of the Pantheon in Rome. 
Was the decision to copy the Pantheon for spiritual or cosmetic reasons? We have absolutely no idea whatsoever, but we can be certain that the Pantheon was not converted into a church until after the first Roman construction at Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem had been built. If we're tracing this back, the predecessor to the Pantheon temple design was the Greek Tholos temple, which in turn comes from a somewhat obscure mix of Celtic and Indo-European, which suggests an influence from the north rather than from Egypt for this particular tradition. Alrighty, I'll leave it there before I start mentioning some theories that would effectively be me starting to dig a massive great big hole for myself. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.